Good afternoon. Um, I'm Ed Massey with Massey Yacht Sales, and I'm here to introduce Jerry Douglas, who has been the chief engineer and designer at Catalina Yachts for 39 years. And Jerry's going to take us through the current thinking and design parameters of the Catalinas, current Catalinas, the 5 Series. He's also going to give us a nice overview of where we stand or where Catalina stands on the launch and production of the new Catalina 52, the 525. And lastly, Jerry is going to give us some insight into their vision and their general thinking about bringing to market the um, True North uh, Down East motor yachts. So Jerry, uh, we'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for inviting me here. Thanks, everyone. Um, I thought I'd start by giving kind of a brief overview of what brought us and the company to this point in our history. And uh, the genesis of the 525 series really started with the Great Recession. Uh, every company was looking for a way out of that recession. And we decided to carve our own path, and it's been quite successful for us. Uh, by way of background, Catalina Yachts started in 1969. This is our, we're coming up on our 50th anniversary year. The company was actually founded in 68. And the company was started by Frank Butler uh, in 1968 in Southern California, in North Hollywood. And the company started by building very simple boats uh, for what was then an emerging market. Uh, the Catalina 22 was the first boat the company built. And at that time in Southern California, by way of uh, the landscape, um, Southern California was booming. The aerospace industry was strong. There were a lot of aerospace companies there that generated, you know, fairly good paying jobs for at all levels, you know, from company executives to machinists. Suddenly they could afford boats. That coupled with the fact that there was um, a growing uh, marine industry and infrastructure in Southern California. All of these marinas were built with bond issues and they built lots of slips, over 6,000 Marina del Rey and Ventura and Long Beach um, with bond issues. And so there were lots of empty slips that weren't terribly expensive, good public launch ramps, and a need for recreation. At that point, uh, many builders, uh, Catalina predominant among them, but also McGregor and a few other companies, uh, Laguna, these companies that many of them are gone by the ways now, but built a lot of small trail boats to address this uh, this growing recreational market, fueled, as I said, by you no know, good economy and uh, proximity to water and lots of slips and launch ramps. Um, and that was really how the company got rolling, building these very simple boats for that marketplace. Uh, I remember when I first started with the company, we, um, one of my first jobs was assigning production for the year. So uh, I remember Sharon Day and myself sitting with a long roll of butcher paper, and we had forms that the dealers all filled out, and they send in from around the country, stating how many boats of each model they wanted, and then we would allot them a certain number of boats of each model each year, and fill in all these little squares on a big chart we made, putting together in truckloads, so we know that you could ship 422s, or 227s, or 25 and 222s, and that was how many dealer, uh, boats each dealer got every year, and that was usually just a fraction of what they really wanted. That's how strong the market was for small, small, trailable, simple boats at that time. Uh, the market evolved a bit. Boats became a little more complicated, but still fairly simple by modern standards. And as the market grew, people had 22s, wanted 25s, and people that had 25s wanted 27s, and the company built upon that. And we turned out some tremendous numbers of the early boats. Uh, 22s were approaching 16,000. 22s. It's the only one of those original boats still in production because there's such a strong one design class. Uh, 25s, we built about 7,000 25s. Uh, Catalina 30s, about 7,000 Catalina 30s. I remember one time in the plant when we were turning out four Catalina 30s a day. Four a day. Four production lines, each turning out one boat a day. It was, it was pretty amazing. 22s, the same way, we were turning out four 22s at one point a day. So these are pretty big numbers. And we built a lot of boats. But what made that possible, these boats were all very, very simple. Um, because these boats were primarily for West Coast market, there was no air conditioning, no generators, uh, a limited number of options. The boats were pretty much the same, which made production efficient, and the boats were fairly inexpensive. 
they were always uh, a much sturdier boats than they were given credit for earlier in those days. Um, but and many of them are still around, which I think is a testament to just how good those early boats were. Again, simple but very sturdy boats. Um, as things evolved, we started doing bigger and bigger boats. Uh, the first boat I, I uh, designed was the Cavalier 36. That was in 1980. The first production models were 81s. Um, we built 2,305 of those 36s. I think it's one of the most successful production boat runs. Uh, we just stopped production just about six years ago with a, with a 36. 34 the same way. Uh, 42, boat became a lot more sophisticated then. Still didn't have air and generators, and then we didn't do those, but many dealers retrofit air and gen. So that was the evolution of the company. We're building um, pretty big numbers, but fairly simple boats at that time. Uh, when we acquired um, a Morgan yacht here in uh, Largo in 1985, uh, it gave us access to a workforce that knew how to build, in some cases, more complicated boats. Not necessarily better boats, but they were more complicated with, with greater complexity of systems than we were doing in California. Because our specialty there was uh, repetition of fairly simple boats. When we started building boats here in Florida, with them we had staff that understood air conditioning, and more complicated electrical systems, and um, you know, generators and inverters and those kinds of things that we really didn't want to get involved in California. And that was a, that was a good step for us. We also knew that we were going to have to have a larger East Coast production facility because most of the market's on the East Coast. Uh, Catalina's always sold 70% of everything we built, uh, approximately, on the east side of the Rockies. And as transportation became a bigger factor and the market became more competitive, and we're competing with East Coast builders, we had to minimize freight costs. So. Uh, although there had been a, a plant on the East Coast for many years, building smaller boats, this was the first plant that we were going to be able to build, build and tool big boats. Um, many years before we actually moved everything here, we kind of saw the, where it was going and determined that at one point we are going to have to consolidate plants. And to do that, um, we tooled every new boat we built from uh, the early 80s, I'm sorry, the late 80s, uh, until now here in Florida. So we did finally make the move, all the tooling would be here and we'd have very little tooling to, to move. Uh, that was a good plan. Um, and then, then the Great Recession happened. 